As functional and commonly used as all of the basic luminosity masks are, the use of custom subtracted masks offers an advanced level of luminosity masking that is an important piece of my workflow. Subtracted masks, also referred to by Tony as off-center mid-tone masks or magic mid-tone masks, further refine the potential of luminosity masks to make very targeted image adjustments. Most people start out learning to use the basic lights, darks, and mid-tone masks, but eventually find that in many cases the basic masks need to be tweaked to get them to really isolate the desired tones. The original panel automated the creation of the basic masks, but custom subtracted masks still had to be built by hand, as I show how to do in Chapter 24 of The Complete Guide to Luminosity Masks. I found out long ago that custom-built subtracted masks were often the only tool that enabled me to successfully make the precise adjustment I was looking for. However, building them by hand and evaluating them was time-consuming and challenging, so I didn't use them as often as I should have. I'm guessing this is the case for many other luminosity mask users as well. Using this tone gradient, I'll quickly demonstrate again how you would generate subtracted selections by hand. You'd begin by generating all of the lights masks and all of the darks masks. To create a subtracted lights mask, you'd start by control or command clicking on one of the lights channels, let's say a light lights, and that selects it. And then holding down control alt or command option on a Mac, you would then click on a more restrictive lights mask, let's say a super lights, and that subtracts the super light tones from the light light tones, leaving an off-center mid-tone selection. This selection would target adjustments towards those upper mid-tones, but the selection feathers off towards the brightest highlights and towards the mid-tones and dark tones. And the same could be done with darks masks. You would start by control or command clicking on a darks mask to select it, in this case a basic darks and then control alt or command option clicking on a more restrictive darks mask, in this case let's say a shadow darks, creates that off-center mid-tone selection. In this case the selection would target adjustments to the lower mid-tones feathering off towards the darks and into the darkest darks and also feathering off towards the lights. With this selection we can use the view button to see exactly what is selected. The density of the red shows us that adjustments would certainly be targeted around those lower mid-tones and that the lightest tones and darkest tones would be completely protected from any adjustment. As he was designing the revised panel, Tony asked me for ideas to incorporate into it. Finding a way to automate the creation of subtracted masks was at the top of my list, but I figured it would prove too complex or too confusing to fit neatly into the panel. Of course, within a few days, Tony had it figured out, and the result is the subtracted mask section of the revised TK panel. Creating and evaluating subtracted magic midtone masks is now super easy using the subtracted mask section. To use this section, you start by either generating all the lights subtracted masks, or all the darks, or in this case, both. For subtractions, it's necessary to generate the light and dark masks using these buttons. The light and darks masks you can generate in the creative masking section won't work with the subtracted mask actions. Once the masks are in the channels panel, all you need to do is start by clicking a number on the left side, let's say two, and that loads that initial selection, in this case, a light light selection, and then I will now click a larger number on the right side, let's say a 4. And just that easily, we've now created a subtracted mask that is a light lights minus a super lights. With the view button, I can preview what the selection actually looks like. If I want to try a different selection, I can just click different numbers. Let's try a 1 minus a 5 and view that. And we can do the same with the darks. So for example make a darks 1 selection and then subtract a darks 3 selection from it. 
And as I said, you generally want to subtract a larger number from a smaller number. Otherwise, the selection will be very minimal to non-existent. As long as the two masks you're subtracting are two numbers apart, you will see a marching ant selection. But if you subtract adjacent selections, such as, let's say, a two lights minus a three lights, none of the pixels will be more than 50% selected, so you won't see any marching ants. But the view button will still show us what the selection looks like. All of the mass and selections that you can make in the zone mass section are actually just subtracted mass as well. As I showed you in the last chapter, a zone 6 selection is actually a light selection minus a light lights. The zone mass are an incremental sequence of subtracted masks. In the subtracted mass section, you can also make all the zone masks. Using the zone 6 example, a lights 1 minus a lights 2 creates the zone 6 selection. But the real power of the subtracted mass section is being able to mix and match subtractions to get just the selections you're looking for. Once you find a selection that will work, you can then use the other buttons in the panel progressively. You can create any of the various adjustment layers and experiment with different blending modes. So with that off-center mid-tone mask, I created a curves adjustment layer. And here's the mask that it generated. And then I could try different blending modes to see how the image is adjusted through that mask. And of course, I can use the actual adjustment layer itself to make adjustments. If you create a subtracted mass that you want to save for future use, you can save it using the Save button. So let's say I want to save that number two lights minus the number four lights. I can click Save and call that a two minus four lights and say OK. And now that mask will be saved right here for future use. Once you're finished using all the other lights and darks subtraction masks, you can click on the respective X buttons to delete them. And as you can see, that saved 2 minus 4 lights is still there. So how do I use subtracted masks? Well, you'll find several examples throughout the latter chapters in the Complete Guide to Luminosity Masks. The possibilities are virtually limitless, but the main way that I use them is if I want to lighten or darken light tones and dark tones, but at the same time keep the brightest highlights or darkest darks intact. In this image, let's say that I want to lighten up the lighter tones, but I don't want to blow out the bright highlights. I'm going to start by creating the lights masks and the darks masks in the subtracted mask section, and then I'm going to select a number two light selection and I can view that just to see that yes that is targeting those brightest areas and you can see the very brightest areas are the darkest red and those are the ones that I don't want to overexpose. So from that I am going to subtract a number four and now I'm going to view that and I can see that those really dark red areas that were the brightest highlights are not as bright red anymore. So they're not going to be as affected by any adjustment I make, but I still feel like it's not protecting those highlights as much as I want. So I'm going to click continue. And this time I'm going to make that same number two light selection. And this time I'm going to subtract a three from it. Now I don't see any marching ants again because I subtracted adjacent masks, but when I click the view button, I can now see that yes, those brightest highlights are going to be much better protected. So I'll click continue. And now I will make a levels adjustment layer. And I'm going to lighten by pulling the bright slider up. And you can see that no matter how far I pull that bright slider over, even though I can lose all the color in the various channels and lose saturation, none of my bright highlights are becoming overexposed. And in fact, if we zoom in on it, we can see that these brightest highlights here still maintain complete detail. 
and if I were to turn off the mask you can see that the entire image would be completely white but even with a less aggressive adjustment to the bright areas let's say somewhere in here I'm not blowing out those highlights through that mask and if I turn the mask off if I made that same adjustment without the mask you can see how extreme the effect would be so my highlights are protected and I'm able to lighten my light tones without blowing out those highlights probably still a little more extreme than I'd actually want to go maybe somewhere in there next let's try something similar with the darks I want to lighten the shadows but I don't want to lose contrast by lightening up my deep blacks so I'm gonna start by making a number three selection in the darks and view that and I can see that that is gonna target all those shadowed areas but now I want to subtract from that let's say a four because I don't want to lighten the shadows at the four level or darker so I can view that now and I can see that these really darkest areas in the shadows are a very light red and the adjustment won't be happening down in those deepest shadows very much at all so now I can make another levels adjustment layer and lighten those shadows and you can see I'm able to really bring those shadows up without losing contrast and without losing those good deepest blacks down in the cracks and other parts of the image. I think you can see how useful and important off-center mid-tone masks or subtracted masks can be. Now that the revised panel makes it so easy to create subtracted masks, I hope that you'll experiment with them and really incorporate them into your workflow.